Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Today, we will finalize this series on female Renaissance child prodigies with Italian feminist painter Lavinia Fontana. In case you haven't noticed, I focus on the most prominent female painters and leave out other females active in other parts of Europe, such as Holland. I admit reviewing female artists active in other disciplines like sculpture. The description below lists skipped artists, so you can let me know if you ever want me to review any of them. Fontana was the most successful of the three painters we have reviewed, and that is probably because her father was a painter who strongly tied in with the Karachi, and she began her career as the daughter of a highly respected and famous painter. In my opinion, Fontana's easy success might even make her story a bit less intense. Let's get to it. There's lots to cover. Lavinia Fontana, 1552 to 1614, Italian female Renaissance child prodigy. In 1552, Lavinia was born to Prospero Fontana, a mannerist painter, and Antonia de Bonardi in Bologna. When Bologna's painter Prospero Fontana trained his teen daughter in portraiture, little did he know that he would jumpstart Lavinia's spectacular career. Born several decades after Anguissola, Fontana was the first female artist able to rely on a steady flow of commissions as a career. Lavinia Fontana defeats a 16th century crisis. As many Renaissance families, the Fontana's average social economic background presented challenges when struggling with the death of the oldest daughter, Emilia, in 1558. When Prospero's nest egg diminished, he devised a plan that helped his younger daughter prepare for a vocation in art, lure noble patrons, and to marry. Like Amicare, when Prospero discovered that Lavinia had talent, he trained her for a future in art and academics. Prospero Fontana, Bolognese School of Art Prospero Fontana worked under the Bolognese School of Art, which existed between 1500 and 1600, with the Karachi during his lifetime between 1512 and 1597. This link was a windfall for the 16-year-old Lavinia and gave her career an incredible jump start. Later, Lavinia became Ludovico Caracci's student, whose techniques incorporated several schools of art, like Titian's treatment of color and soft tones, Raphael's graceful line, and Michelangelo's aggressive form. Although Lavinia was an adolescent when she showed a natural inclination for portraiture, she was still a child prodigy. Besides Prospero and the Karachi, Fontana's strongest influences were female artists Anguissola, nun painter Caterina Vigri, and sculptress Properzia de Rosi. Lavinia Fontana, mannerist painter in counter Reformation context. Like Anguissola and Gentileschi, Fontana's training took place against a counter Reformation context when wars focused on spirituality. We have already seen that Roman Catholics sought to intensify the religious sentiment through biblical themes and figures and art. Although Fontana's first public religious work is lost, the oil on panel, Christ with the Symbols of the Passion, 1576, is at El Paso Museum of Art, Texas. This masterpiece expresses passion typical of Baroque and Mannerist art and contains symbols of Christ, cross, nails, crown of thorns. The work fulfills Council of Trent's standard requirements for religious art. Furthermore, this masterpiece reflects Fontana's pristine reputation with the church. Family was a highly valued institution. Fontana and Renaissance High Society, Father-Daughter Effort. 
prosperous social network of noble, educated, and ecclesiastical families helped refine his cultivation of the widest possible audience for Fontana's commissions. Her skills catered to the marketing of both male and female portraiture as a commodity. Fontana successfully cultivated the patronage of high and noble society. Lavinia Fontana markets portraiture as a Renaissance commodity. Examples of Fontana's patronage include Duchess of Sora, Constanza Sforza Boncompagni, and her father Gregory XIII, Pope Paul III, Clement VIII, and nobleman Girolamo Mercuriale among many others. Fontana was especially empathetic to patrons with special cases, such as the hypotrichosis syndrome child, Antonietta Gonzalves, from the Canary Islands. Like Gentileschi and Anguissola, Fontana's works embraced the realms of scientist, scientific discovery, humanism, and academics. Lavinia Fontana and Giampaolo Zappi, a couple who lived centuries ahead of its own times. The collaborative efforts of father and daughter eventually paid off. In 1577, Fontana wed painter Giampaolo Zappi, but if society expected this marriage to follow rules of traditional Italian family life, it proved to do anything but. The Zappi household reversed conventional gender roles. Fontana did bear 11 children, but it was Zappi himself who performed the domestic tasks and acted as an agent for Fontana while she attended art classes at University of Bologna and painted. By 1580, Fontana earned her doctorate degree. Lavinia Fontana, Style and Major Commissions Fontana trained in her father's workshop as a mannerist painter, so her style was close to Prospero's and that of her later teacher, Ludovico Caracci. Although her style contained many aspects of Baroque art discussed in Gentileschi's review, it leaned toward mannerist qualities. Fontana's major commissions fell into both public and private spheres. They included Assumption of the Virgin with Saints Peter, Chrysologus, and Cassian, 1584, for Palazzo Comunale, Imola, Bologna, Noli Mi Tangere, 1581, and Ritratto della Famiglia Maselli, 1565-1614, for Pierino Maselli and his wife, Bianca degli Utili, who would die at 37 after bearing her 19th child. Fontana's first public commissions, Holy Family, 1589, and Holy Family with the Sleeping Christ Child, were for the altarpiece at Escorial, the royal palace near Madrid, for Philip II. Fontana's paintings are notable for her focus on color, expressive detail, and popular fashion. Lavinia Fontana in a gift-giving culture, self-portrait at the clavichord with a servant. In the Italian Renaissance, portraiture was a popular social political political commodity, which grew in demand with the church's emphasis on marriage and family. Fontana knew that portraiture documents that portraiture documents the seal of authenticity and immortalizes esteemed human qualities and institutions as intelligence, skill, marriage, and family on canvas. In 1577, Lavinia gifted self-portrait at the clavichord with a servant to the Zappi to commemorate her betrothal to Giampaolo. Fontana portrays herself as an intellect with highly accurate physical features and so proper that she is still accompanied by an older female chaperone. La Vigna Fontana as a witness to female legacy, portraiture as a living testimonial. In similar cases, Renaissance portraiture serves as an immortal legacy for the portrait sitter, in addition to f- fulfilling her professional obligations under the Vatican's patronage, Fontana's works immortalized honored members of society. 
Bianca Deliutuli, for instance, leaves a legacy that unravels her life as a wife, mother, and respected member of high Bolognese society. Ritratto della Familia Gozzadini, 1584. Fontana's artistic objectives fulfilled inspirations brought about by other feminist painters. Portraiture documented marriage, baptism, birth, death, and true legal status. For example, after the Bolognese socialite, Laudomia Gozzadini inherited the family fortune. She commissioned Fontana to do a retrospective family portrait that included deceased family members. Laudomia Gozzadini's bright attire and her sister's prominent position intentionally sets them apart from male in-laws in the dark background and displays the int- t- intimacy of the Gozzadini females to the family f- legitimacy of the Gozzadini females to the family fortune after Ulysse Gozzadini's death. This portrait responds to a lawsuit over hair legitimacy. As Fontana herself had born children who died, she was sympathetic to loss of loved ones. Ritratto del neonato della Nella Cula, 1583, may infer an infant death or a christening. The immortalization of female nobility was a favored theme for Fontana. Lavinia Fontana, Witness to Male Legacy, Portraiture as a Living Testimonial. Male portraiture also grew in popularity, and Fontana did not limit her subject matter to that of the female gender. In 1589, Fontana executed a portrait for Gerolamo Mercuriale, a leading physician, author, and physical therapist who occupied the chair of medicine in Padua. In 1573, Mercuriale, Curiale treated the Holy Roman Emperor, Maximilian II, who in turn made Mercuriale an imperial count palatine. Like Gentileschi's colleague Cassiano dal Pozzo, this man had a library filled with classical literature. Lavinia Fontana, court artist, the Vatican, Rome. Besides being the first Italian Renaissance female to earn a living from steady commissions, Fontana was the first female artist to carry out grand-scale public works for churches. In 1603, after Prospero's death, Clement VIII commissioned Lavinia for the last stoning of St. Stephen Martyr, an altarpiece for San Paolo Fuori Le Mura, which burned in 1823. When Fontana moved to Vatican City, Rome, to fulfill a post as a portraitist, Gregory XIII and his children, the Buon Compagni, became her steady patrons. In 1614, before her death, Fontana was chosen to enter the Accademia di San Luca, Rome, established in 1577 for architects, sculptors, and painters. Lavinia Fontana Legacy Fontana's students at the Academia de, di San Luca may have included Alessandro Tiarini, who also studied under Prospero, and composer painter Aurelio Bonelli. There was much controversy surrounding Fontana's authorship, as many of her surviving works are mistakenly attributed to the Italian Baroque painter Guido Reni, who lived between 1575 and 1642. And two of her masterpieces, Self-Portrait at the Clavichord with a Servant, 1577, Oil on Canvas, Rome, Academia di San Luca, and Self-Portrait in the Studiolo, 1579, Oil on Copper, Uffizi Gallery, Florence, Fontana strongly identifies as a female intellect. Although Fontana died in Rome, 1614, and rests at the Dominican church, Santa Maria Sopra Minerva, in Rome, she still goes down as Italy's first successful female painter in her own rights. Hope you've enjoyed this discussion on Lavinia Fontana, Italian Manuist Female Painter. 
Fontana differed from the two previous artists in this sense that she had the best of the best from the very beginning and therefore was very highly respected in her Bolognese hometown. Her father, Prospero, was an admired painter of the Caracci's Bolognese school and fondly patronized by the Italian popes. Fontana was the first female painter to be universally educated and able to rely solely on private and public commissions for a salary. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.